Hey, this is Justin with RockyMountainATVMC.com and this is our WP4CS fork seal replacement video. The WP4CS fork is found on a lot of modern KTM and Husky Husaberg motorcycles. KTM and Husky started using them here in the US in 2014 on some models. And the way to tell if you have a 4CS fork is by looking at the cap. You'll notice the cap says 4CS on it, and you'll also notice that the rebound and compression are on opposite fork legs. So if your fork cap looks like that, you're watching the right video. You're gonna need fork seals, dust seals, and fork oil. We have a variety of fork oil. We're gonna use the Bellray 5 weight. And then we have Maxima suspension clean and Bellray grease. The common tools we're gonna to use are a torque wrench, a ratchet, and a regular screwdriver. And the specialty tools we have is a KTM press out tool, a Motion Pro seal bullet, a Tusk seal driver, a Tusk fork cap wrench, and a Tusk hex axle tool. We just use this for the 17 millimeter hex end for the bottom of the fork. The first thing we need to do is remove the forks from the bike. So I'm gonna take off the wheel, the fork guards, caliper, and then I'm gonna pull the forks from the triple clamps. <laughs> to start, we wanna keep track of where our compression and rebound clickers are. So we're gonna turn them all the way in and count the clicks. So this one's 12 clicks out. We just wanna keep track of that when we put the fork back together. And then once we get that number, we're gonna take the clickers all the way back out. Now we can go ahead and clamp the fork in a vise. You wanna do it where your triple clamp goes. And I wanna point out another tool you do need is some soft jaws for your vise so you don't damage the fork tube. With the fork secured, I'm gonna use my Tusk fork cap specialty tool. And I'm gonna loosen the cap up. Now I'm gonna put the fork over my oil pan, slide the outer tube down, and pour out whatever oil is left in this fork. The seal was leaking pretty good, so there's not a lot of oil left in this upper chamber. With the oil pretty well drained from the top, we're gonna to put it back in the vise and take out the cartridge in the bottom. This is where the 17 millimeter hex comes in handy. And you're gonna need a drain your drain pan right underneath your fork because all the oil out of the bottom is gonna run out of this thing. Now that the lower fork is drained, we're gonna use the KTM press out tool. And this is just a plastic dowel that makes getting the cartridge out a little easier. Give it a few hits and it pushes the cartridge out. If you don't have one of these, you can just grab the spring up above and pull it and, and work the cartridge out as well. With the cartridge out, I'm just gonna set the fork there and let any excess oil drain. And then I'm gonna take off the cap off the cartridge so I can remove the spring. To get the cap and spring off, I'm gonna use a 19 millimeter wrench. Put it on the lock nut and then I'll use my fork cap tool. Loosen the cap. It may go loose and then hard again because I simply just lowered the lock nut. Now I can remove the cap with my fingers. As soon as the cap comes off, the rod's gonna wanna drop. Then I can remove the spring. And then I'll just set the cartridge and spring on a clean rag. When you pull the spring and cartridge, keep an eye out for the spring spacers. They may be sitting on the bottom of the spring, on the top of the spring, or both. So keep an eye out for those. Now moving to the outer tubes of the fork. You're gonna wanna get your screwdriver wedge it between the dust seal and the outer tube and carefully work it out. 
And with the dust seal out of the way, this is going to reveal the retaining clip over the oil seal. And you're going to use your screwdriver to catch the edge of that clip and pull it out. With the clip removed, we can pull the fork apart and expose the fork seal. And to do that, we're just going to kind of pound these two apart. So here we have the oil seal, a washer, and then our inner and outer bushings. Now we can remove everything. To get the inner bushing off, we're just going to put our screwdriver in the slot, turn it, it comes right off. And the outer bushing, washer, and the seal. We're also going to remove the retaining clip and the dust seal. With the fork disassembled, I'm going to clean everything really good with the Maxima suspension clean. And I'm going to inspect all the parts, make sure everything looks right. One thing you want to pay close attention to is the inner and outer bushings. The inner bushing has a Teflon coating on the outside, the outer bushing has it on the inside, and you want to make sure that this is in good shape. If there's little aluminum specks stuck inside or you see any wear on it, you want to replace them. These are in really good shape, so I'm going to reuse these for assembly. I'm going to make sure I have the inner tube really clean. And before I install the seals and the bushings, I'm going to check for any burrs, if any rocks or roost have hit it. If there are any burrs, you can use a little file, a, a fine file to get the burr out. You just want to get that sharp edge off because that may be what was uh, causing your seal to leak. If there's a burr there, it'll cut right into the seal. This fork's in good shape, so I'm going to go ahead and put on the seals and the bushings. Because the edge right here on your fork tube where the inner bushing goes is really sharp, to prevent from cutting your new seal, you want to put on the Motion Pro seal bullet, put grease in your dust seal, slide that on. Next is, next is the retaining clip. Then I can put my oil seal on. Again, make sure you grease the inside of the seal really well. If you're confused on which side is up and which side is down, the open side of the seal that's concaved, that's going to go toward the oil, so that's going to go up. Next goes the washer. Now we can remove the seal bullet. We're going to put on the outer bushing and the inner bushing. The inner bushing you got to spread open with your fingers and it snaps into place. Before we install the outer tube, we want to make sure it's really clean. When it's clean, we can drive the seal and bushings in. We're just going to put the outer tube over, slide the bushing washer and seal up to the outer tube and then we'll put on our seal driver. Give it a few hits and you can feel when that seals in all the way. It's a pretty solid hit. If you're unsure just make sure that groove for the retaining clip is visible. Then we can put our retaining clip in. I like to use the seal driver to push it in place. You usually hear it snap into the groove. You always want to look at it though and make sure that the clip is in place. And to get the dust seal in place, I'm just going to push the outer tube on top. And there you go. Now we're ready to put in the cartridge. Before I put the cartridge back in the fork, I'm going to pull out the push rod. The push rod's used for the rebound and compression damping adjuster. Now I'm going to go ahead and slide this into the fork. I'm going to slide the cartridge in. Again, not necessary, but it makes it kind of nice. You use this tool to push the cartridge in all the way. 
And then we're gonna put oil in the fork. Again, using my soft jaws, I'm gonna put the fork in the vise. And I'm gonna add oil to the bottom of the fork while I slowly pump the rod. When you add oil to your fork, you wanna check your owner's manual to make sure uh, to get the right spec. This is a 2016 KTM XC. All the XCs in 2016 take 640 milliliters of oil total, 510 in the bottom. So I'm gonna put the 510 in the bottom right now. And while that's pouring in, I wanna carefully pump the cartridge rod to get some of the air bubbles out and to allow the room for all of this oil to fit. So now I clamp the bottom of the fork leg and I can put in the base valve assembly. And I'm going to torque this to 29 foot-pounds. With the fork upright, I'm going to put the remaining bit of oil in the fork. On this fork, it's 130 milliliters. Now you want to go ahead and bleed the cartridge, so you want to pump the rod and get all the air bubbles out. If you look down into the fork, you can see a bunch of air bubbles coming out. And it helps to kind of push the rod to the side a little bit when you're pumping. You just want to make sure that there's no more air bubbles coming out. You'll know you have all the, all the air out and you have it pumped correctly when the rod rebounds about halfway through its full stroke. So this fork is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the spring on. I'm gonna pull the rod the rest of the way up. Then I'm gonna put on my spring spacers. Don't forget your push rod. The spring. This part is sometimes tricky. Got to hold the rod up while you put that spring on, and then we can put our cap on. As you're installing the cap, make sure you kind of pull the spring out of the way and make sure the nut is backed off all the way so that the cap bottoms out on top of the rod. Once it's on, we can tighten the lock nut. So we'll get our 19 millimeter wrench on the nut and our fork cap tool. And then we'll torque the lock nut to 14 foot-pounds. And we'll slide the tube up, thread the cap in, and then tighten the cap into place. You really don't need to have this cap very tight. Once it's pinched in the triple clamps, it can't go anywhere. So I just snug it up a little bit with my wrench. And call it good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my clickers back to where they were. So I'm gonna go all the way back in and count my 12 clicks out. Keep in mind that even though the compression and rebound are on opposite forks on this bike, the steps for rebuilding it and changing the seals are exactly the same. Once they're all back together, quickly clean them off and put them back in the bike. Well, that's it for rebuilding the 4CS forks. Like most forks, it's really not that hard of a procedure. A little investment in a few tools can save you a lot of money in maintenance on your motorcycle. Be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more how-to videos and check out our website at RockyMountainATVMC.com for all the tools, oil, sills, and anything you need to maintain your motorcycle. Thanks for watching.